Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me back here in the garage. It's a nice early, uh, sunny Sunday morning, and try to get a short video in here before uh, the humidity kicks up. It got pretty hot and muggy yesterday, and uh, yeah, old rage kind of bothers me once in a while. But what we got here is an oil filter relocation kit. And I use this one here on my engine stand. I haven't used it in a long time. I don't even know how much oil's in this. But I'm going to take it apart and show you something. And what I'm going to show you is how not, underline, be like me. <laughs> Had a mishap here with, uh, with Simon. Uh, as you see the last video, uh, got him started up and ran and got him in and out of the garage. And as I was going around trying to uh, do some uh, test uh, and some shakedown passes, I had a little mishap, and one of the mishaps is oil filter came off the uh, oil filter relocation thing. And if you guys uh, run a full flow uh, system on your uh, Volkswagen, uh, you'll recognize this. I actually had one of these from the factory, uh, probably not this exact same thing, but it was uh, similar on a four wheel drive S10 I, I had. They didn't have any room uh, on the 4.3 engine to uh, run an oil filter on the engine, do with the uh, pig for the four wheel drive, the, the front differential, uh, that they actually had the oil filter up in the engine compartment, which was makes it really nice for changing your oil. Um, you don't have to crawl underneath the car so much to, <laughs> you do have to drain the oil, but you didn't have to draw, crawl back underneath the car to change the oil filter. Uh, but what I did is I decided to change the oil filter after I got Simon up and running. Um, probably really didn't need to. I like to run these uh, cheaper uh, oil filters for a break-in and what I had was uh, an FL100 which is a Ford oil filter and it's uh, a really big unit holds a whole quart of oil. I, I like running the bigger oil filters just for the extra capacity of oil and I normally run an HP1 Racing by a Fram and I have a right now what I have on the car is a Wix, I think it's a 51, 51.5. Um, here, let me check. Yeah, it's a 51, 51.5 R, which is their version of the racing filter. And it's, it's a big, large capacity oil filter. But the F100, you know, for some reason I was thinking, ah, I don't want to run that, I'm going to change it out really quick. And uh, I did, I changed it out. And uh, put the, uh, actually I went with the, uh, I don't remember the number, but I went with a K&N because that's all I could find was a K&N uh, racing filter. And they have a, on the bottom of those, they've got a deal where you can put a wrench. And I did, I put a wrench on it. I cranked it down really good and tight. But I'm going to show you what happened. So I'm going to take this off and show you the inner workings of this uh, relocation thing. And we'll see if I have this one on here, right? Because <laughs> I didn't have the... Uh, I didn't have the other one for some reason put together right. I don't know if it's just how I originally put it together. I know I always kind of fought putting oil filters on it and I was too lazy to figure out why. Now I know why. And uh, yeah, I'll show you what the inner workings of this looks like. Said this is one that goes on my engine stand. I usually have it mounted on there. Used to start engines up on the engine stand. Still can. Just can't do mine. Mine's got all the electronics on it, but if it's still a basic distributor, it's got a little bit of oil in it. Looks like I was running the good green stuff the last time. <laughs> you see me dancing around out here a little bit. <laughs> got mosquitoes and some flies. I got shorts on. I didn't put any bug spray on. Had a lot of wet weather uh, here in the last couple of weeks. and Wet weather, hot humidity, grows mosquitoes as well. But it looks like I've got this, this adapter on here correctly. But when you get these things, I don't even think they come with instructions, but you know, common sense says you should put them together correctly, but who says I'm full of common sense? <laughs> and like everybody, I make mistakes. But this little guy here, see if I got this one. I felt it move. Must 
Loctite this one in. This is your little uh, union in between the adapter, relocation adapter, and your filter. I must have Loctited this one in. What we got here is a threaded unit. And you can see, very real close here, there's like this knurled little area in here. Where's my pointer? I got my pointer. Then right down in here is this little narrowed, knurled area. And uh, it divides this threaded thing up by one third and two thirds. And for some reason, I had my two thirds section in the adapter this way. So what would happen is I would try to screw the oil filter on here. See if I can get a good, good view of this. And in the process, this thing would screw in as well. And if you get screwed in there too high, you barely get a, a thread. And I kind of knew the problem throughout the years. You know, just throughout the years, I'd just make sure I'd unscrew this thing some before I started the oil filter on there. And as I said, I did put a good good turn on that came in with a wrench. It came in, like I said, it's got the, uh, the spot on the bottom you could actually put a wrench on. But all I did was basically catch maybe a thread, a thread and a half, and it did tighten down, but apparently in the process of taking Simon around the block, um, must have vibrated loose a little bit and I always uh, you know pre-lube the, the rubber o-ring on there so you get a good couple extra turns on there and man lo and behold what you know I decided I was going to do a little test hit and uh, run the car out a little bit and see how it felt and that was a bad thing kind of kicked myself in the butt for not checking that oil filter before I took off because I was going to but yeah, in the process of going through first, second, and third gear, I dumped <laughs> six quarts of this expensive green fluid out and uh, left the oil filter laying down in the road. And yeah, I did make it home, but it wasn't without consequences. And uh, here's a short little video I took to send to Jeremy of the uh, the, the damage. Um, you can't really see the damage, but you can see the rod. Uh, was loose. I got lucky. I had Jeremy come over and listen to the engine so I did get it back up and running again. It just didn't sound right to me. And it was a good thing because I tore it down and and found that uh, the rod bearings were shot. And uh, luckily the carnage wasn't as bad as I thought. I figured I was going to have rod bearings welded to the crank and the crank was going to be junk and going to have to start all over again. But thanks to Jeremy to convincing me that I should tear the tear the engine down and uh, one of those pesty critters right now and I got them <laughs> look at that <laughs> but uh yeah um carnage was uh the rods needed to be reconditioned crank needed to be turned 10 under and that was about it I got lucky um so now not um not running a standard main bearing rod bearing now my crank is uh, standard main bearings and 10 under rod bearings which is no big deal and simon's back up and running again but uh for some reason i'm not building the boost i was i got a new uh, turbo sitting here so right now i'm in the process i'm not 100 percent sure it's the turbo's fault it's possible draining the oil out of the engine did damage the turbo but I'm kind of suspicious of the wastegate. I did take the turbo out and look at it, and it doesn't look too bad other than it's used and old. But uh, yeah, the uh, the wastegate's next. I'm gonna take that off and take a good look at it. Yeah, but yeah, guys, when you assemble these things, look for that knurled section and put the small layer of threads into the uh, adapter. Just like this. Probably use a little Loctite too. But what you're going to basically do is wind up turning it down to that knurled section and then it's not going to go any further. And you're going to put your oil filter on there and that'll give you the proper amount of threads to screw this guy back on. But yeah, 
don't be like me. <laughs> yeah, the next video should be some more test hit videos um, or uh, possibly going to go over to a friend's house and see if we can get his dad's old, uh, actually I'd like to say it is an old buggy but it's a really nice looking uh, sand rail. Um, we're going to see if we can get that to run so uh, stay tuned. If you like what you're seeing here uh, please subscribe, like, and share. Till next time, keep shifting those gears. See ya. Just another guy